Okay, so I um I recently spent a bit of time with the Tudor Black Bay, which um is so it's not the original Black Bay, it's the um one from twenty sixteen. Right. So it features the in house movement, um and it it's a little bit thicker. I think that's kind of the main yeah. changes. And um, the shield. And it's got Tudor shield, yeah. And I think also the text at the bottom is not like doesn't have the curved oh, yeah. curved text anymore, so that's different. Um so yeah, we've had the, we've had it in the office six months or so. Um we finally got around to getting some decent hands on time with it. Um so yeah, I think I think Tudor is a brand. I think they're they're really interesting. Um, they're kind of a brand in my mind that is like really hard to hate. I don't know. There's many people out there who like resent Tudor that much because I think, especially at their price point alone, what they offer yeah. is just insane. And I think um, that's a almost a generational thing though, because I know that oh, lots okay. of people, you know, back when they kind of just made Rolex models mm -hmm. more affordable, lots of people kind of looked down on it as you know the poor man's Rolex. Or right. Okay. I think for us as young watch enthusiasts, not being mm. around at that time, and then you know, modern day Tudor is a it's a pretty cool brand, and it offers yeah. something at a price point which hasn't really been offered before. Mm. Yeah, I think so. Um, so obviously, I've spent a bit of time with it. Is there any anything that you kind of picked up on your like first impressions of the watch? Right, so yeah, without me have really spent any time with it yet. The main thing that I picked up on was the case thickness. Mm -hmm. So obviously, with the change to the in-house movement. I think the case actually became slightly thicker than the Rose version, yeah. which kind of down to the design of the watch with the, the case brunt, like taking all of the thickness, mm -hmm. then it, I don't know, it's a bit thick for my taste okay. and a bit big, um, mm. but I can appreciate it for what it is. I think, you know, for Tudor, they're trying to be respectful to like the past of them basically recreating the Submariner. Yeah. But bringing it into their own. So I think the larger case size and a bit more contemporary feel, even though it's kind of vintage and designed, mm -hmm. it is a, a modern watch and you can definitely tell it apart from a Submariner, which you know, the Tudor divers of the past, you couldn't really. Yeah. I think in terms of build quality, that the fact it's a modern watch is, I think, yeah, the build quality kind of reflects that basically. Yeah. Um, it does have the look of an older watch, but it's not like a homage. It's not Tudor saying, I just want to. We just want to create a watch that's one we've done in the past and is a reissue, yeah. whatever. It's it's got aspects of that. Um, so obviously you've got you've got red on the bezel. Um, you've got kind of the gold gilt color on the on the whole dial, really. Yeah. Um, but I think even little things like the fact the bezel doesn't have that. The bezel, all the details are stainless steel. Um, the size as well. It's forty one mil, so it, it's thicker, um, but it's a more modern proportioned watch. Yeah. Um, the, the thickness as well, it's like 15 mil or something, so I, yeah. I do agree that's quite I, thick. Yeah, after spending some time with it, that that is probably the one, the only downside. Um, yeah. And obviously, I think Tudor have clearly recognised this, um, with obviously the, the 58 right. they've, they've released this that year. That kind of comes with, you know, you are getting an in-house movement at a relatively yeah. low cost for an in-house movement. Yeah. So for, for a watch of the build quality, you know, they have to have certain restrictions, I guess, in, mm -hmm. in the way they execute things. And if to make it two thousand pounds instead of five thousand pounds, it has to be a few mil thicker. Then I think you know that's fair enough. It's just it's competing at the price point that it wants to compete at. Yeah, I think that's the thing. Most most people who buy the Tudor Black Bay might not necessarily be bothered about that that extra thickness. Yeah. Um, I think if you think of, it's quite hard when you're kind of surrounded by the watch world. the whole your whole life. Yeah. Um, you kind of think that those little things that you pick up on matter, but I think for the majority of customers, the, the added thickness probably won't be much, yeah. won't, make, won't make much of a different difference, especially as the modern wrist now is used to the bigger size. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It wasn't long ago that 44 mil watches were the mm, thing and everyone had to have one. And yeah. I think, you know. Well, it's, it's still, you know, I think we're still in that era. We're not. It's not fully back to the vintage yeah, size, gone, and but... you know we're not everyone's down to thirty-eight mil watches or anything. There's still people who love the bigger size. Um, yeah, and it is kind of slightly fashion forward as well. You know, the mm -hmm. Tudor is slightly directed towards more of the mass market than just the watch enthusiasts. So they have yeah. to bear in mind, you know, just because us watch enthusiasts love old vintage watches, the mm. majority of people won't, won't yeah. even know no, what, they won't. No. what they are. So. Um, yeah, and I think that's a good point. I think that's where this is a really solid watch because I think it appeals to both people really. If yeah. if you're the everyday man who wants, you know, you want to spend two thousand pounds on a watch, um, maybe you like the sub, but you don't, you can't quite afford it, or you don't really want it. Yeah. Um, it has that look, um, but then if you kind of look at it from the other side of point of view, from a watch enthusiast view, 
Yes, it does have similarities with a sub, but actually, once you look at it deeper, you do realise there are quite a few differences. Yeah, um, and it's drawing on its own history, like with the snowflake hands and stuff. It's not. Yeah. It's not just a, a rehashed sub or a. Mm. a they haven't sat, sat down and went, okay, we have this Tudor submariner or whatever, like the Marine National one, where it was. Yeah. Pretty much just a submariner mm -hmm. with snowflake hands, but they've actually, you know, changed enough things to make it identifiably a Tudor watch. I don't think at a mm. distance anyone would really confuse them. No, I don't think so. I think. I think probably the main thing that kind of does that it would be the, the snowflake hand. Um, it's, it's nice, it, it's one of those that doesn't actually look like an old design on the watch. You know, I know it's been around for a while, but yeah. people, you might think because it's so big on the dial that it actually makes the whole watch feel quite old school. But stick it in a modern case with modern details and it doesn't look that out of place. Yeah. Um, I think it's quite nice. I think the angularity of it kind of lends towards a contemporary feel as well. Yeah. Like it is an old design, but I think even back then, you know, it was quite a, a forward yeah. thinking design or, you know, it's, it's not really dated. Okay. So when it came to straps for the Tudor, um, it, it comes on a oyster style bracelet with rivets, um, yeah. which I think the rivets were a new addition for the 2016, um, yeah, I, think watch. So, yeah. I think so. Um, and that's really cool. It, it does really add to the the kind of vintage, it's not like, I suppose like a vintage flair they've kind of added to the watch. Yeah. Um, it does have 22 mil lugs, so I think it does, that does not, well, it depends on what you're after really, but for me it doesn't really lend itself to watch. I think it just well, makes it yeah. feel big. I don't know, maybe that's just because we've got a diverse yeah, watch watches. I mean, we're both um, very used to wearing a 20 mil strap. I think, yeah. You know, there's only two more difference, but when you have it on the wrist and when you hold it, I guess the initial shock of it just being bigger it kind does, of makes it look maybe it, less elegant. Or, yeah, I think so. I think um, the, the tapering as well, doesn't it? Only, it tapers by two mil, so it's like mm. 22 to 20 when I think the Rolex Submariner strap tapers by five. Four, was it four, four or five, five mil. Ah, yeah. right, okay, yeah. Um, so, you know, it's kind of a less, I don't know, elegant feel to yeah. it, I think. Yeah, it's very... Tool watch is, isn't it? It's yeah. large and shrinky, it's in your face. Um, so yeah, obviously working where we work, the, one of the first things I did was change out the strap. Yeah. Um, so I put it on the Hiley, um, which is in the light brown colour, which right. I think as soon as it was on, I realised it was just the perfect strap for it. Um, the watch is about 15 mil in thickness. Uh, the strap's about six and a half. Um, so you know, it's just under half the thickness of the watch. And that I think that really helps mm. the wearability of the watch. Um, yeah. I think it it did kind of reduce the thickness. I think because, yeah, I think because the strap was similar, it didn't feel like a chunky watch in a way. It's, yeah. it's really weird. Um, I think it, the strap just worked as well. It, it matches the gold color gilt on the dial. Yeah, um, I think the natural tones really kind of accentuate the warm gilt of the dial. It's, yeah, it's pretty good. And then the, the stitching matching the loom quite nicely. It, mm -hmm. it just kind of lends itself to it very nicely. Yeah. Yeah, and the strap, I mean, it, it's got padding around the, around the top um, and it does taper off to, like, no padding at all. Yeah. Um, but the leather's really, it, it it just softened up, like, straight away. I wore it for, like, a week or so. Um, and it feels like it, the strap's been worn for ages, really. Um, it really suits the watch. Um, so, yeah, I think, for me in general, if, if I was looking for this sort of watch or, like, a diver um, for, what, around £2,500, it's a really solid option. Um for me, I think, like you were saying, the width is something which I can't get past. Um, yeah. It's nice for the time I spent with it, but if it was mine in my collection, I would want something a little bit thinner, right. um, which kind of leads quite nicely onto Basel World this year. Yep, the um, Black Bay 58. So yeah, the 58 was introduced. Um, it was something you and me both really wanted. We did our video before we talked about um, watches we want to see and uh, I think we said 38 mil Black Bay was something we really want to see. Yeah. So we're one mil off, which isn't too bad. Um, so yeah, the, the 58, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so that's Tudor's kind of, I think, best effort of lending itself to the, the vintage, mm -hmm. vintage focus customer. So obviously with the watch being kind of a, re a reissue of a iconic vintage model, I think yeah. doing one that's not so contemporary sized, it's more towards the say the watch enthusiast customer rather than the, the fashion forward customer mm. but you know, I think it's it's nicely executed so they've shaved off a few mil from the case I think it's around 12 mil thick now around which that, yeah. even though that's not thin it three mil when it's like directly off the side of the case makes just a huge difference yeah to how it would wear and then the smaller size obviously like for me with the smaller wrist mm -hmm. it would it would help and then yeah 
I'm the vintage guy, so yeah. <laughs> I think yeah, it was a re really good rear shield. But um, the only thing I don't like about it is the the gilt on the bezel. Okay, so yeah, I think the gilt on the strong, dial of the original models kind of, well, they're only being on the dial that made the dial really warm mm. and they kind of almost pop from the bezel because it was such a contrast. Yeah, but with it being on both, I think you lose the contrast and it almost goes from making the watch pop to making it very understated. Which yeah. Depends what you like, but I think it verges on a bit too much like fake vintage style. Yeah, I don't mean. Me. Yeah, um, but I'm also glad to see that they tapered the uh, bracelet more as well. So I mm -hmm. think that the bracelet tapers by four mil on this model, so it's really lending itself to kind of the vintage Tudor fans rather yeah. than yeah, the contemporary chunky thick watch fans. Yeah, I think so, and that's the thing with with the Tudor and the Black Bay is that they, you know, it was first released in 2012, so that's six years they've had to. Gather feedback from people and yeah. you know develop it in house how they want to do it really and then listen to what the people want um, and yeah as we said most reviews and most people out there uh, they all do pick up on the thickness the original rose was thinner um, obviously it made it thicker for the for the new movement but uh, so I think the thirty eight mil does have its own its own new movement as well obviously yeah um, so it's nice that they've able to have their own still in house movement but shave off some of the thickness yeah um, that's quite unique for. A watch at this price point and kind of where the brand sits because mm. you know to develop an in-house movement is a massive cost and a, a mm. long time to do it so yeah. for them to actually go and produce a, a new in-house movement even if it is you know a slightly different version of this one yeah it's quite impressive that they didn't just use that same caliber so. yeah exactly yeah um so i think kind of summarizing the watch i think it's a really solid option at the price point yeah. there's quite a bit of competition out there from like the likes of like long jeans and rs um, so yeah, around the two thousand price point. Um, but I think if you are after like a modern, proportioned, um, like a well-built, like kind of like a subtle homage to vintage watches, but isn't like you know this is a reissue. Yeah, something with a bit of history, but yeah, it's yeah. yeah there's a bit of a story there um, that you can kind of get your emotional connection to. Um, I think the Black Bay is a really solid option, so I would definitely consider. It's definitely worth going into a store and trying it on, seeing what the thickness yeah. is like for yourself. Um, yeah, definitely. Okay, so that's kind of mine and Ben's thoughts on the Tudor Black Bay. Um, obviously, from someone who's kind of first impressions of it, um, yeah. from someone who spent a bit of time with it. Um, obviously, it's a really popular watch. We know there's probably plenty of you out there who do have it. Um, so, if you do have any th personal thoughts yourself, so maybe comments on what we said, um, if you let us know in the comments below, um, okay. we'd all love to have a look through and read and see what you think, basically. Um, so, yeah, stay tuned. We'll have more videos coming out soon. Um, and if you like this setup, this slightly different setup, um, let us know as well. So, yeah.